Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video we are going to discuss about cell membrane structure. When we talk about cell membrane, to be very much specific, here I will be focusing on cell membrane of the eukaryotic cell. Logically, how is the cell membrane of eukaryotic cell? We can say it is very thin. It can be observed only under electron microscope. It is elastic in nature and it has a regenerative property and most important that all the cell membranes they are selectively permeable they allow only selected substances to enter the cell or leave outside the cell now cell membrane with respect to their chemical composition so whenever we are studying chemical composition first we need to understand that each cell membrane is made up of lipoprotein so basically we can say it has lipids and in this the proteins are more in amount so we can say it is made up of lipoprotein the lipids and the proteins they form the major component of the cell membrane how much percentage neat exam may it can be asked 60 percent of the plasma membrane basically is made up of proteins what we need to understand next the most important point is that the proteins that are found in the cell membrane what they do what is the role of that protein so very first I can say it provides mechanical strength to the cell membrane at the same time it helps in transportation of substances in and out of the cell like tunnel protein it plays a very important role next what we have lipids so when we talk about lipids in a cell membrane how much lipid is present so we say 28% to 79% but the percentage of the lipids is going to vary depending on the type of the cell Example, if I talk about in humans, the myelin sheath basically it has more amount of lipid. 79% lipids are found in the myelin. When we talk about lipids in the plasma membrane, they are of different types. To be very much specific, there are three types of lipids in the plasma membrane. Now, what are those three types? The very first type that I can say is phospholipids. Very common in all the cell membrane. Second is glycolipids. Again, it is common. And third one is sterol but the point is where the sterols are found so and how it is found in animal cells it is found in the form of cholesterol in plant cell the sterols are found in the form of phytosterol and when we talk about the microorganisms they also contain sterol and the sterol found in the microorganisms it is called as ergosterol these are the different types of sterols and found in the organisms Let's focus on carbohydrates. 2% to 10% of the plasma membrane basically it consists of carbohydrates also. We need to understand lipids and proteins they are joined together therefore we say cell membrane is like lipoprotein kind of stuff but both the lipids and proteins they are joined by covalent bond it means they are covalently bonded to each other. The most important cell membrane model is fluid mosaic model which is also known as cell membrane model even it is called as singer nicholson model why it is called as fluid mosaic model because the proteins are embedded in the mosaic form in the fluid of lipids so it is that's why it is called as fluid mosaic model point is what makes the cell membrane fluidic so we can say the quasi fluid of nature of lipid is just because of the phospholipids and this quasi fluid of nature allows the movement of proteins you know on the cell membrane fluidity the smoothness the easiness of the movement of substance of the plasma membrane is provided because of phospholipid it's a very important point for your neat exam fluidity of plasma membrane is because of phospholipids and what are phospholipids made up of we say they are unsaturated fatty acid in case of cell membrane lipids they are amphiphatic in nature now the point that comes here what do you mean by this word lipids are amphiphatic what do you mean by that it means that they are structurally asymmetrical in nature so they are asymmetric with respect to polar head and a non-polar tail why because any lipid molecule that we will be studying in the cell membrane structure we need to understand that they have a polar head and a non-polar tail so outside the membrane you can say is the head that is polar in nature basically and the outer membrane of the cell membrane also consists of 
lipid sugar chain that is glycolipids now what we need to understand here we need to understand the structure of the cell membrane for that i need to draw a cell membrane so let us draw this as a cell and inside the cell i draw a very thin cell membrane what we are going to do we are going to take out one small portion of the cell membrane and we will try to zoom it and we will study how exactly the cell membrane looks under electron microscope so we are drawing this now this what i'm drawing is a lipid layer structure it's a bilipid layer structure so we can say the phospholipids basically they are two layers so this is the head which is polar in nature and the lower portion basically becomes the tail and the tail is non polar in nature what is the important property of the head the head is hydrophilic in nature it has attraction for water and the tail is hydrophobic in nature it hates water or water repulsion but this bilipid layer structure is also embedded by certain specialized proteins that can be three types of protein found in the plasma membrane structure either it can be internal protein or external protein even i can say a tunnel protein when i say tunnel protein it means the protein which is traveling across the cell membrane you know it forms a tunnel like structure that's why it is called as tunnel protein so this red color structure whatever you are seeing is external protein blue color is internal protein and the pink color is called as tunnel protein now let's explore the structure of cell membrane in detail and try to understand what exactly this cell membrane is made up of whenever it comes to the thickness of cell membrane remember student they are 45 armstrong thick this is a lipid layer since there are two lipid layers involved i can call it as lipid bilayer structure very important the plasma membrane or the cell membrane of eukaryotes is a lipid bilayer structure and each lipid layer consists of head and two tail it has one head which is polar and hydrophilic in nature there are two tail which is non polar and it is hydrophobic in nature this is very important part to be kept in mind now let's talk about the proteins basically the head we mentioned it is polar and the tail is non polar but whenever it comes to proteins so for that what i will do i will take this as the outside of the cell or outside of the plasma membrane and this i take it as the inner part of the plasma membrane so this protein what you are observing the red colored one which i have drawn is called as external protein external protein is also called as extrinsic protein and these proteins are very loosely bound they are not tightly attached since they are loosely bound they can be easily removed so with respect to external protein you remember it is loosely bound it is external it is extrinsic and it can be easily removed external proteins are also known as peripheral protein very important part now we have the next one that is called as internal protein so when i talk about internal protein internal protein is also called as intrinsic protein now this intrinsic protein they are in between you can say between the two lipid layer so definitely they are tightly bound and since the internal protein or the intrinsic proteins they are tightly bound they cannot be easily removed and the other name for internal protein is they can be also called as integral protein so we have peripheral protein integral protein and the last protein that we need to study is the tunnel protein so this structure what you can observe which is traveling across the membrane is called as tunnel protein it's the most important protein because it gives the pathway for the molecules to pass through it the proteins and all can pass through this tunnel so tunnel protein runs across the membrane connecting the inner side and the outer side and it is visible on both the ends of the plasma membrane that is what is tunnel protein but when i draw the 3d structure of the cell membrane what i observe it has lots of head so this is all you can say hydrophilic head and on the head you are going to get some glycoproteins these are basically the receptors kind of structure that is present on the only on the outer side of the cell membrane just remember keep this in mind that glycoproteins are present on the outer surface so these proteins that i am drawing on the outer surface is called as glycoprotein 
and these are all the sugars which are attached on the surface of the plasma membrane so this is the outer part of the surface inner surface will not have anything so what i can say here this part let's do the labeling this is called as glycoprotein very important and these are all called as glycolipids so this is different labeling and these receptors are very much important on the cell membrane because it helps in the communication with the cell and most important we need to understand what is the function of the cell membrane so students let's start with the functions of the cell membrane very first function of the cell membrane that i can say it helps in transportation of substances either it is active transport or passive transport both transport takes place active transport requires energy and passive transport no energy is required so when you talk about active transport it is by osmosis and when i say passive transport it is purely by diffusion it shows pinocytosis engulfment of liquid material and phagocytosis engulfment of solid material it most important shows endocytosis and exocytosis you can see in the animation how the lipid bilayer had formed a vesicle and has engulfed the particle in it and at the same time when it has to throw the particles out so look at the vesicles bringing all the waste fusing with the cell membrane and this is how the waste will be thrown out this is exocytosis it is one of the best animation that you can ever see for endo and exocytosis for this animation don't forget to give a like my dear friends when we talk about the next function the cell membrane is going to provide mechanical strength very important the cell membrane is going to provide you can say protection by forming a protective layer at the same time the most important that this cell membrane helps in the diffusion of gases hope students you would have easily understood the structure of the plasma membrane in the entire series we are going to complete the cell organelles don't forget to give a like share and comment this is sunil sir saying goodbye to you thank you very much